Hey guys, this is Andre from Cryptomaton and in this video we're gonna continue looking at how to build your crypto trading bot from scratch. But before we do that, I have started a new YouTube channel where I'm discussing Web3 decentralization and the metaverse. In the future I'm also expecting to cover more cryptocurrency related content, so if you're into that kind of stuff, why not go down there into the link down there into the description, right here, right here, there. And check it out and maybe even subscribe that'll make my day okay now without further ado let's just jump into it open our IDE and write some code if at any point you feel like there's some basic principles which you don't understand or you feel like you need more information on how to get started please do check the first two videos in this playlist as I cover everything from the very beginning how to install Python how to install pip and what pip is how to install Python packages and how to install an IDE those are all prerequisites that you will need before attempting to actually write this Alright, so the first step is to define the trading strategy. What do we want our bot to trade and how do we want it to trade? What is the logic for this trading bot? In order to keep things simple, we're going to code a DCA bot. Now, if you don't know what DCA is, DCA or dollar cost averaging is a trading strategy that's designed to minimize the risk associated with trading volatile assets. By buying them at regular intervals, you will ensure that you will, in the long run, average out. Alright, so last week we were able to connect to the Binance exchange using our API key and secret and get this to return our balance. In this week, we're going to put the basis of a DCA bot. So the first thing we want to do is ensure that we can create an order programmatically using the Python Binance module that we have imported here. So for that, we're going to need to go to Python Binance and see what the syntax is to place a buy market order. So we're just going to grab this and just paste it here. We're gonna change the symbol to BTC USDT because we want to buy Bitcoin with US dollar and we're gonna change the quantity. 100 is way too much. Uh, we don't wanna buy 100 Bitcoin. We're gonna change this to $50 worth of Bitcoin today. And that would be 0 0.0014. Cool, just gonna change a few things. We're gonna create a function that basically does this for us. The reason it's a function is because we may want to call it multiple times. So what this does is just ensures that this code here doesn't have to be written multiple times, right? So also what we're gonna do is we're going to ensure that we return the output of this little bit of code. And once we have this, we're gonna add a main function. Now what a main function will do is it will run the buy coin, but obviously we don't want to just run it once, we want to run it continuously. So we're gonna say while true, so this is a loop, which essentially means keep doing this, buy coin. Now we also want to ensure that the algorithm tells us that it's going to buy this coin every time it does it so that it gets logged to the console. So for that we're going to use a print statement that says buying BTC. Now in order to make this a little more robust and more configurable, we're going to replace some of the hard-coded values with variables that we will be using in the future. Also do bear in mind when you create strings just make sure to keep them as single quotation marks and not, not doubles. So we're just going to create um, at the comment and create a section called the uh, config. So here we're going to replace this with a variable called coin. And that is going to be BTC and one that is called pairing with the value of USDT. We're also going to add another variable that's called quantity. That right now will be equal to 0014. So what we're going to do here is replace symbol with coin plus pairing. And replace quantity with quantity. Now the only thing that we need to set up again is to ensure that this bit of code here won't run more than we need to. So 
we need to import a module that will allow us to delay our script that will essentially just tell our script pause for a certain amount of time. So for that, we're going to import time. And in here, we're going to use the time.sleep function. So we're going to add it in just here. Now time.sleep takes arguments in seconds, which means that if you give it 60, it will sleep for 60 seconds. It will delay the algorithm for 60 seconds. Uh, we want to DCA once a week, so we're going to find out how many seconds in a week. And we're going to take that number and put it here. So now we just need to add one more bit of code that will enable us to run this. So when you create a function, it will not run by default in Python. You need to call the function just as I did here. You see, I have defined the buy coin function in this block here, but I'm actually calling it here. So this is where the code is actually, this code is actually executed. As you can see, the main function is not being called anywhere, so we need to call it. There we go. This is just best practice for Python when you want to execute bits of code. Um, it essentially says if the name of the file is main, like if this is your main file, um, then execute it which is essentially calling the main function. Okay, so if we try and run this, you will see that I have left a coma. That should have not been there. If we actually try and run this now, we're going to see a message that says account has insufficient balance for requested action, which means that for all intents and purposes, our algorithm is working. It's, it's just that I don't have enough balance in my account to buy this amount of Bitcoin using USDT. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a try and accept block within the uh, main function to kind of handle these situations, right? So we want the algorithm to um, by every week, but we also don't want it to stop in case we don't have enough uh, balance in our account or anything like that. So we're going to add a try and accept block here. All right, so now the algorithm will try this and if it will fail for any given reason, it will move to the accept block and it will accept this block of text. This will enable the algorithm to keep running and not break even if it encounters an error. So if we run it now, you'll see that it will just keep trying to buy Bitcoin. Obviously, we don't want it to keep trying to buy something when it comes with an error. So we will still need to ensure that once it tried to buy and failed, we still want it to pause for a week. So we're going to add our time.sleep underneath the try and accept blocks. And sure enough, you can see that now it's not doing it again. You will do it again next week at the same time. Now, one more variable that we need to add to make this even more robust is period. And period equals one. And then if we multiply this by period, we're going to get the number of weeks here. So this one represents the uh, DCA time given in weeks. So I'm just going to leave a comment to make it more obvious. DCA period defined in weeks this is the quantity in coin. So obviously, if you want to DCA a different coin, such as ETH, you will also ensure to change the, pair, uh, the quantity because uh, 0 0.0014 ETH is very different from 0 0.0014 Bitcoin, which will result in a min notional error on Binance, which means that we cannot buy that little of ETH. We need to buy a bit more ETH. So for example, if we try and run the code again with 0 0.14 ETH, we will get the same not enough balance in our account error, which is fine. That's what we want to see in this case. And that's pretty much it. This is a very basic script, but it works and it can be developed further.
Well, there you have it. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel as well as my new channel linked down there in the description below. We will be building on top of this basic DCA bot in the future episode, so make sure to follow this journey in order to build out your bot into a more complex and robust version. We will be looking at multi-coin support, maybe multi-exchange support, different quantities for different coins, so to turn it into an actually useful tool. But you gotta start somewhere and now you've got the basics. Until next time, Cryptomaton out.